Well, joining us now for more on the story is Craig Considine. He's a sociologist at Rice University. Craig, uh, thanks for coming on the show and sharing your insight. I think one of the first questions being asked very soon after uh, Friday's attacks was, how could an event like this have happened in New Zealand? Well, I don't think this case is unique to New Zealand. What we're seeing is the, the rise of white supremacist nationalism is happening across what we might refer to as the Western world. And a lot of it is being promoted by, or at least uh, in a way justified by political leaders who not only openly uh, discuss white nationalist narratives, but even the president, Donald Trump, refused to condemn this very, very real threat of white supremacist ideologies. Mm -hmm. So it's not unique to New Zealand. It's, it's happening uh, across the world, and we have to recognize that this is a, a transnational problem. It's not impacting uh, one nation alone. Okay. Um, and how do you think this fits into a, a climate of, of anti-immigration and, and rising uh, Islamophobia? Well, in the, in the early 1990s, we had a scholar from Harvard University, uh, Samuel Huntington. He came up with the clash of civilizations theory, which essentially created a binary. We had this idea of a Western world and an Islamic world, and he argued that they're fundamentally incompatible. So with the migration of Muslims to Western countries, you have a lot of people on the far right, and even in conservative circles, actually buying into this, this theory, this claim that the West and the, the Ummah, the Islamic world, is on a collision course. So when Westerners see Muslims in their communities, a lot of the times, this clash of civilizations theory is popping up. And again, it's popping up because of mainstream narratives that politicians are actually putting out into the public mm -hmm. sphere. So they're playing on these, on these fears. The fears are, are unnecessary because this binary, this idea that the Islamic civilization and Western civilization are somehow fundamentally incompatible ignores the fusion and the synthesis that these two worlds have always played um, off of each other over history. Okay. Um, and I'm interested to get your take on this. What does it say uh, that the main perpetrator in this horrific attack actually sent out a lengthy manifesto uh, prior committing these crimes, as well as uh, live streaming the attacks on social media? I think this is a very easy point. This troubled individual was looking for attention. He wanted to be remembered for what he did. And you know what he also did on his, uh, on his gun? He wrote the name of Bissonnet, who was the man who carried out the attack on a mosque in Montreal. So it's almost like he's trying to be a martyr of some sort. He's trying to be a hero. But at the end of the day, what he's looking for is attention. And let me be very, very clear here. We need to not remember this murderer. We need to remember the victims, which are about 51 now. A good friend of mine, Khalid Badoon, and I recommend all of your viewers go to his social media website. He's been honoring each of the victims with all of their humanity, their brothers, their daughters, their husbands, there are neighbors, there are co-workers. These are the individuals these are the legacies that need to be remembered, not mm. the individual who exactly. live streamed this. He's just looking for attention. All right. Uh, Craig Cotsonite, thank you for uh, that great insight and, and analysis. I appreciate it.